In this video, I will present a low-cost, parallel kinematic compliant translation stage constructed from 3D printed parts and commonly available hardware. In industry, such devices have a variety of uses like alignment of optical components and optical fibers, probing of semiconductor devices as well as microscopy. Motion systems can be categorized into serial kinematics, which stack axes one upon another, and parallel kinematics, which connect multiple axes to the end effector simultaneously. While conceptually straightforward, serial kinematic systems present a disadvantage in that each axis is required to constrain all six degrees of freedom. This allows error motion and deformations due to external forces to accumulate progressively along the chain. For this reason, a parallel kinematic approach was chosen for this project. In particular, the mechanical topology you see here served as its basis. It consists of three identical blocks, each driving one translational axis of the end effector, while also constraining a single rotational degree of motion. This symmetrical design is reflected in the construction model, which also features three identical drive blocks. Each block connects to the end effector using two wire flexures. The wires are mounted on a 3D printed flexure, which allows for linear motion driven by the crank wheels while locking one rotational degree of freedom. As always, the project is open source and all FreeCAD models as well as ready to print files and a bill of materials can be found on the GitHub page. Feel free to take a look. Now let's look at how the device is built and assembled. The design was optimized for ease of construction and is made from three identical blocks making the process quite straightforward. Nevertheless, the assembly of the wire flexure unit warrants closer attention. Besides the 3D printed parts used to build the unit, we also need the assembly fixture to guarantee accurate spacing of the mounting points. Also, a 0.5 mm spring steel wire and super glue is required. First, the wire is cleaned to remove any residual grease and to promote good glue adhesion. The fixture contains a small hole, which is used to cut the wire to the correct length. Subsequently, a piece of wire is used to ensure the holes are free of any obstructions. Exercise caution not to poke your fingers with the sharp ends of the wire during this process. The two wires are then secured into the first attachment block with adhesive. A small drop of super glue wicks into the hole before the wire is inserted. Following a similar procedure, the stiffening rods are now glued onto the wires. The fixture is used to move the rods into the correct position before the glue cures. Note that the fixture is not symmetric, and it is important to use the correct side for proper spacing. The second attachment block is then glued into place, following the same procedure as for the first. Again, the fixture provides correct spacing of the component. To ensure correct assembly later, Orient the countersunk holes of the attachment blocks opposite to each other. This detail is easily overlooked but crucial for proper fit. With the wire flexure unit finished, the rest of the mechanism can be assembled. The process is quite self-explanatory.
Now that the assembly of the device has been demonstrated, let's explore some of its potential applications. In the first example, it serves as a microscope stage with a CMOS image sensor chosen as an intriguing sample for observation. The translation stage allows for precise focusing and panning of the sample. Each pixel of the microscope camera corresponds to about 500 nanometers on the sample. Let's evaluate how precisely we can center a small feature on the chip using the stage. Let's do another one. Another very interesting example is optical fiber alignment. In this demonstration, light is coupled from the left fiber to the right one. Since the light cutting core of a fiber is more than 10 times smaller than its outer diameter, the fiber ends need to be positioned within a micrometer for efficient coupling. Likewise, coupling light from a laser diode into an optical fiber is a useful application of the device. In the final example, I'll quickly demonstrate the translation stage being used to drill small holes in brass. In this case, the drill has a diameter of 0.3 millimeters. Thanks for sticking around to the end. If you enjoyed this project and want to support the channel, leave a comment or subscribe. I'm planning a follow-up with a similar device using motors in near future, enabling complete computer numerical control and a larger working volume.